Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to be talking about serialization and deserialization using JSON. Before we start, it will be really useful if you liked and subscribed to the channel, it really is a huge help. Uh, but let's get into serialization. So, what is serialization and why do we need to do it? Well, put simply, serialization is a way of taking a complex object uh, and then turning that into something which can be persisted long term. So we can store it somewhere, so it can be later brought back into memory and we can do something with it. In this example, uh, I've got a, an object called blog post. That object has several different properties that you would associate with a blog post, like a title, a body, author, whether the blog post is public or not, and the date it was published. And if we were to serialize that blog post in JSON, we can turn that class into its JSON equivalent. And that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you. And then following that, we'll look at deserialization, which I think you can imagine is kind of the opposite, where we take something from JSON and we turn it back into its original object. So how would we go about turning this blog post into JSON? How would we go about serializing this to a JSON object? Well, let's have a look at that then. First of all, I'm gonna use a package called Newtonsoft. We've used this quite a few times in most of my videos. Uh, when it comes to JSON, this is kind of the go-to for me. Uh, I'm just gonna remove some old libraries. This demo console, man, it's been, it's been a trooper. Goodbye, Rest Sharp. We don't need you today. So let's just stick with what we've got there. So Newtonsoft is the library we want. And if I show you the dependencies I've got, you can see in packages, we've got newtonsoft.json. In terms of your project, if you wanted to add Newtonsoft, you can right click and go to manage NuGet packages. And as you can see here, installed packages include newtonsoft.json. So it's a popular high performance JSON framework for .NET. And it really is a massive toolbox in terms of manipulating, working with uh, JSON in general. So once we've got Newtonsoft installed as a NuGet package, it's time to start thinking about how we're gonna handle our serialization. Now there are two main serialization classes in Newtonsoft or JSON.NET. There's JSON convert, and JSON Serializer. So JSON Serializer as a class gives us a little bit more control over the underlying serialization from a lower level. But for simple use cases like most of them, JSON Convert will be enough. So JSON Convert is the class we're gonna be mostly looking at today. JSON Convert as a class offers lots of simple methods uh, for serializing and deserializing objects. It's essentially a wrapper around JSON Serializer. So if you think of JSON Serializer as the more low level, JSON Convert, we're just staying at a high level. We're just saying, let's just do the basics. Serialize, deserialize. And that's what we're concerned with. So let's look at an example then. So I'm gonna take this blog post, I'm gonna create an instance of it. So we're gonna have our own blog post instance, and then I'm gonna serialize that object to JSON using Newtonsoft. So, first things first, I'm gonna create a variable called my blog post, and it's gonna be a new blog post. And I'm gonna do some inline initialization here. So, when I construct the blog post, I'm gonna set the title. So, the title is Boris Johnson wins no confidence vote. Topical. The body is, oh my God, he did it. I can't believe he did it. How the hell did he do it? Short and sweet. I'm not gonna put a semicolon on there because I'm a good c -sharp developer. <laughs> and then we're gonna specify our author. Now for some reason, I've spelled author in the American way. Maybe I'm a traitor to my UK brethren. But the author is none other than my good self. Is public. So we're gonna say false. This isn't ready to be consumed. This great blog post <laughs> is just not ready for public consumption. Uh, and then the publish date, well, it's gonna be some point in the future, but for the purposes of this, let's just set it to datetime.now for simplicity. 
I like being simple. So there we go, we have an instance of blog post called my blog post. And so if we were to mess around with this, you know, we can access all those different properties and do whatever we need to do with it. But for our example, we want to serialize this. We want to turn this into JSON that we can store either in a database, a document database in particular, or we could save it to a text file and come back to it later. So how do we do this? Well, to serialize this object, we create a variable. So I'm going to go var. I'm going to call the serialized result my blog post JSON. And with this, we can start to call our JSON convert class. So we'll go JSON convert. And as you can probably see, we're not getting any IntelliSense and it's not picking up the object. It doesn't recognize this type JSON convert. So I'm going to hover over it and see if there's anything that we can do. So show potential fixes. And we can see that it's simply because I've not added the newtonsoft.json namespace as a using. So there we go. So now it recognizes JSON convert. And on JSON convert, there is a method called serialize object. So this will take an object, serialize object, and that object can be pretty much any type. It's a nullable object, or there are overloads which accept various other parameters. But from a very, very simple use case, what we can do with this is just chuck our object into it, in this case, our blog post. And that will take care of all the serialization um, creating the JSON for us. So if I add the object, my blog post, and there we go, that should be everything we need. If I hover over the variable, you can see that it is expecting the result to be a string. And so we can run this and see what we get. So I'm going to put a handy little breakpoint just here and run the demo console. Okay, so at this point where the code is broken, uh, not broken, breakpointed. My code doesn't break. Um, we can see the object and here we go. We've got all the properties initialized and we have our blog post. So let's turn that into JSON and I'm gonna move over one and then inspect the result. And if I do a view, you can see Bob's your uncle we've got some JSON and it was as just as simple as that really, really, really straightforward. Um, that's a really, really quick way to serialize an object to JSON. But there's more to this. What if we wanted more control over what was being serialized while still reaping the benefits of a simple class like JSON convert? Well, this is where the attributes come in. So Newtonsoft has a lot of attributes that you can append to various aspects of your object so that you can control how the serialization process works. For example, if you wanted to exclude a particular property from being serialized, so say for example, we didn't need to serialize the publish date, then we can go down to our object and put an attribute over the publish date and it would be JSON ignore. So if I now serialize this again, we should find that the publish date is missing from the JSON. So if we look at the resulting JSON, you can see there's no date. So we've been able to say serialize this object, but ignore this property. Now by default, the serializer will serialize any public members of a class. So what if you've got private members? Well, they won't get serialized unless you put an attribute to say, actually, I do want this to be serialized. So in our blog post, for example, I'm going to put a constructor. So public blog post. And then I'll say that this constructor takes a parameter of string called ID. Then I'll get rid of that JSON ignore and we'll create a private read-only string called ID. And then we're going to set that ID from the one we passed in. Okay, so our object has a private member that was set on creation if the person who was creating it specified an ID. So here, for example, 
In fact, this is now a required property. We can say, uh, there's our ID. Okay, so this will create a blog post with all the properties we specified before, but as part of the constructor, it will set a private var variable called ID to this value here. And then we wanna say, even though that's private, I want to serialize it. So we're gonna go to this property and above it we'll put JSON required. And so if I run the serializer again, and there you go, we have ID, even though it's a private member and we wouldn't have seen it before. And just to demonstrate, if I remove that and run it again, There we go, no ID. So that's how you can sort of override the default behavior and say, even though this member is private, I want to serialize it anyway. And these are just two of many, many different attributes which you can append to properties on classes that you're serializing. So if you put an attribute in and type JSON, you'll see lots of different attributes. And I'll put a link to the documentation so you can see uh, the more in-depth explanations of what each of these does. But the benefit is that you can use that simple JSON converter with the added flexibility of using attributes to say, I want some control over the way this is being serialized. So what about the other side of the coin? Say we've got some JSON and we want to deserialize it. Well, that means we're gonna be taking the JSON and turning it back into its original object. So we're gonna take a JSON representation of our blog post, and then we're gonna turn that into a blog post object. This again is nice and straightforward. So you can see here, I've just opened up Visual Studio Code. It's my preferred text editor. It's nice and simple to use, and it's really good at uh, rendering lots of different languages and text formats. So I wanna create some JSON. I wanna just create a basic representation of a blog post. Um, so I'm gonna select a language here, type JSON, and here we go. So I'm gonna make this an object and I'm gonna start creating our JSON. So title is my really cool blog post title. I'm getting less imaginative. Body will be, I promise it's worth reading my content. This blog is not just full of developer test posts, honestly. No, really. Please don't go. Okay, and author, a really lonely man, and is public. <clears throat> True. Sort your JSON out, mate. Okay, so we've got our JSON. So now we just need to be able to read that in so that we can deserialize it. So I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna save it in the folder that every developer seems to have on their hard drive, which is temp, and it's gonna be blog post JSON. Let's not call it blog post JSON, blog post dot JSON. So back in our project then, we can get rid of what we had before. So the first thing we want to do is read the JSON in from the file. So we've already got using system.io, which we'll need for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the text from the file. So we'll call the result blog post JSON text. And that is file.readAllText. And then we need the path, which will be temp blog post.json. Okay, so that should give us the string we want. So let's just check to make sure that's working. Cool, good to go. So now we've got our text in a string variable, we can deserialize it. So we can then say var my new blog post equals, once again, JSON convert. And now we're using deserialize object. 
but we have to pass in a type. So we're going to be converting this to a type blog post, and then it will be our text, blog post JSON text. Sorry, blog post JSON text. So if we hover over this variable, you can see it's suggesting that it will be implicitly converted to a blog post. Uh, and let's give this a, let's give this a test. So there's our string, and then we run the deserialization. And there we go, we've got a blog post. Now notice that we actually left out a couple of variables. Uh, so publish date is the default date because it was null. And ID didn't have a value as well, so it's also set to null. So be careful of that. Um, you know, there's lots of ways that you can be tripped up because the deserializer is only going to deserialize what it can find in the actual object. Uh, so just make sure uh, that you're checking the JSON, you're checking things that have been deserialized to make sure that the integrity of the object is good, that the object is stable. If you're reading a lot of JSON in and turning it back into an object, it's really prudent, I think, to make sure that those objects are good after the fact. So I hope this was useful. Again, a very simple introduction to serialization and deserialization but I can honestly say this is a huge part of my day-to-day -day work and it's a really, really useful skill. So I hope you did find it useful. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any ideas as to new content that you'd like to see, uh, maybe there's a certain area of C-sharp you'd like more information on, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon.